G'day, I'm just going to do a little uh, demo. I am about to varnish a painting. Now the painting is about 21, 22 years old and I had a varnish on it, I think quite early on in that process. So it's really time, it just needs one more. So what I'm using is I'm using Langridge's uh, uh, varnish, gloss, gloss varnish. And uh, what a varnish is, is it's a different chemical composition to the paint. So when it goes on, it doesn't interfere with the paint layer underneath, but gives you a nice glossy finish. Langridge is an Australian company and I'm really loving the products they're putting out. They're really, really good quality and uh, not yellowing. They'll come up really good and last for a long time. So I'm using the Langridge uh, and the Art Spectrum in combination with their glazes. And um, for this particular job, I'm going to be using the varnish. This is a product I haven't used before. I haven't seen it until very recently. And it's an isolating medium. So it goes over the painting before it, when it's finished, before it has its varnish. And it separates your paint from the varnish. Now I would put that on here, except I've already varnished this one. So uh, it will sort of give a wrong compatibility for the varnish. So. Um, I'll be uh, putting that on my next lot of new paintings, but that sort of gives you a protection layer between your painting and the varnish. I often worry about my paintings because I've used a lot of glazed medium and I think later on in life, if someone comes and cleans them up, they might clean off a couple of the top layers of that, uh, me of that uh, medium paint, which has got very thin amounts of transparent paints on them to give you that molded tone. So I'm a bit concerned about that in the long term. Short term, not a problem, but maybe when I'm 150 and dead and, and pushing up daisies, um, this particular product would help to, to give the barrier between those two things. So interested to know how it's going to work for me. I might be alive to know it's going to have a work for me, but I'll be putting this on my next lot. But this particular painting um, has already had a varnish layer, so I'm not going that route for this one. So this is the painting. Now I'm going to pour out what I think I might use. I might put too much out, but I don't want to put it back in the bottle. So when I'm finished, if there's any leftover product, I have to throw it away. So it's important that you have a nice clean brush that hasn't sort of had a lot of other paint in it. So using this as a varnish brush, it's got a bit of long handle. That'll help me reach over there because I'm right in front of a window, but it's a really horrible weather this last week or two. And um, I don't have really good lighting. So we'll have to do it in this spot. And uh, I'll just sort of come back up and turn it around and you'll sort of see as I start to work the painting. I'm going to start over in this corner here. Now this is a beautiful big old myrtle uh, and I'll give you a look at the painting later on when it's done. Um, but just make sure you don't have any excess and as you start painting just keep the horizontal stroke or the vertical strokes in this case. I've got it flat but if you put too much on you don't want to have bubbles appearing. So it's just a matter, now this stuff will dry fairly quickly. So I'm um, gonna work my way across. Now, this is a good spot to be seeing what's happening. Um, you can see the shine where it's wet, but you can also see the color riching up. Now I like this angle because you can get a, I can get a good view on the, on the um, coverage, making sure I haven't missed any spots. Um, so it looks nice and easy. The other thing you need to do when you do this is be careful you wipe your brush off well and you don't cause air bubbles in the paint. So you don't scrub it, just a nice light finish. You will get little bubbles appear when you first put it on the canvas, particularly with all the ridges, but they will dissolve out. But you don't want to sort of press hard and do, do it so vigorously that you actually create a detergent -y type of an effect on your varnish. Sure, 
where I get all the coverage I want down in this corner and I'll go back over here so you can sort of see as I, as I work you see that wetness um, the thing about the varnish is that'll become its finished state it'll have this nice shine this is a gloss varnish um, I can't see any point for my paintings to use a matte varnish um, because I have a very high tonal range if you've got that you can see the tonal difference in here um, if I sort of do a stripe you can sort of see that difference straight away and the colors just rich up so you can see those greens just come straight back in um, so that's getting back to what it looked like when I was painting it basically so you're not sort of adding anything in that sense but um, it's that wetter clean fresh look and the colors in this side there's a fairly flat dull uh it's a very dark painting this painting um it's i do use a lot of um transparent tonal uh paints in here and also i'm not sure about this one i don't think transparent um black had been invented when i did this i use that a lot these days uh so it's possibly just a a, um, a straight ivory black um, that's mixed in with the paints but they you know, particularly the darker tones uh, can get um, that flatter look in later time you can see that flatter look there so in the in the way that you you work with that um, it's it's a very tonal space of doing it it's a similar sort of paint range that I'm using here that someone like Rembrandt would have been used and you know he used a lot of darks and blacks in his paint and um but he, also you'll see with all those old masters they're also quite glazed and varnished as well and the reason for varnish is exactly the same thing you want that rich tone and you can see the rich tone is missing in here um and it doesn't get any better no matter what your angle it is it's still got that flat look so as soon as you put that varnish on it brings that back up and then you can start to really enjoy what was going on with the paint as well so i love those trunks coming up and you can sort of see them just raising in just getting down to two thirds done and you can sort of see the differences it's making I really like having the light on the side like this because it gives me a really good bead on what I've done and what I might have missed. So the, the material underneath this is a fine Belgian linen. Um, I use Kaysen's Belgium linen number 15 which is a pre-primed um, just gorgeous to work on it's a lovely texture enough tooth to take the paint and give some texture to the to the work um, very strong very very heavy canvas in that sense um, it's not a lightweight canvas I'm just going to give you a view closer up I don't do this two-handedly you can sort of see what happens when the varnish goes on it just really lifts the paint it's interesting because your um, acrylic plastic paints uh, need varnish even more than your oil paints do um, they go very flat straight away as soon as they're dry no matter no matter what sort of paint it is it, it does it goes into that space so they all all the acrylic works need um need to have a varnish uh, oil paint does too just doesn't have to have it as often um and it's got its own natural shine in it so you see i love this look at the beautiful colors just coming up now you can sort of see that 
just love the richness of the paint. As I come back in here. this gorgeous there's a beautiful rich texture of the paint love it uh, I'm a firm believer that uh, when you paint the paint has got to be interesting from two inches away just as much as it does from 20 meters away but if it can't be a really stunning work from across the room or it doesn't doesn't work when it's really close um, then I'm never happy I think one of the nice things when you know, look at the work of the masters is that they, they just sing when you get up close. It's about the quality of the brushwork and the paintwork just as much as it is about the physical content of the painting, the subject, the, the competence of however they're painted. And frankly, that applies, oops, let's get that one out of there. That applies to abstraction just as much as it applies to realism. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, if the paint's thin, it looks thin. And it is thin. I'll put the camera down and finish this up. Just wanting to give you a look at the finished product. Um, I had to take it outside. It's a really bad overcast day and there's no light inside. And it's about to go to the gallery, but I'm just putting this film together now. So I'll took it outside to show you. Hopefully it won't rain on the next few minutes, but it's actually protected. That um, if I did get drops of rain on it, it won't hurt that uh, varnish now. And I had a beautiful wooden frame on this. Uh, this is a handmade frame. Uh, the frame is made from myrtle, which is the actual tree that the paintings of. It's a beech myrtle, and um, I just gave that a nice little polish as well with some um, beeswax type uh, polish. So it's looking really great and about to go on show. Just totally love it. And believe it or not, wow, this is what this rainforest looked like when I was painting it. So really pleased with the way it's come up. No more flat spots looking fantastic. Just a reminder, if you're interested in my work, go to my website, russellmccain.com. Really simple to find. And uh, this works in the gallery. It's still available for sale. Going on exhibition this week, so get in fast if you're really interested. Um, a whole heap of things on my website, including some more blogs. And uh, you also can chase this back to my YouTube channel, which is Russell McCain, simple again. And uh, there are other things about my painting and art on there as well.